For today's outing, we're at the Noryangjin Fish Market. This is my first time here. This is one of the most famous markets in all of Seoul. It's a fish market, a seafood market, and we're gonna check it all out. There's six floors, if you can believe it. Like check Plus it two basement levels. Yes, so technically eight. You can see all of those. Yeah, so lots so, of fish, yeah, we, and I think we're also going to try to eat lunch here, have some seafood. We've got a lot of exploring to do. So here on the third floor, we have the dry fish stores where everything is already pre-packaged. You can take it home and do whatever you do with dry fish. Next up, we're going into the live octopus stores. And this is actually considered a delicacy in Korea. You eat the baby octopus while it's still like wriggling around. Um, I've never tried it before. I, I tried it like once about 10 years ago. Oh. And <laughs> it's a fascinating experience. We're not going to do that today. We're just going for some normal fish. Yeah. But <laughs> if you're up for a challenge, then yeah, that is something you can consider doing here. At the Live market. baby octopus. market. The one time I visited a fish market in Busan, I remember it was summer, I was wearing flip-flops and I ended up getting fish juice all over my toes. It was gross. And this time around, I didn't wear proper footwear once again. So the fish juice has been like seeping into my canvas shoes. Now my shoes are wet and I've got fish juice in my socks. So this is really nasty and we just got here. down a level to the second floor and this is the fresh fish store level and we're seeing a lot of fresh fish. We're seeing some huge fish. Yeah, there's huge. Just about everything here to be honest. They sell rain boots. That's probably a really good idea in a fish market. I'd suggest coming with rain boots or at least, at the very least, wearing closed shoes. We are now on the second floor and we have found a whole bunch of restaurants that specialize in hui and that's the raw fish, kind of like sashimi. So we need to choose one, we need to settle on one. So we finally settled on a restaurant there. I mean, there's a lot to choose from. Yeah. So we're just walking around and we're like, okay, finally, let's make a decision. So we saw that this place had some people and it had some nice traditional seating. So we're like, yes, let's give it and a shot. And it had a relatively affordable menu yeah. because the seafood here appears to be quite expensive. Well, you can get really expensive seafood. The stuff that we're getting isn't as expensive. We're getting chobok, which is kind of basically the best way to explain it. It's kind of like Korean sushi. And we're also getting hui dopbok, which is basically sliced raw fish with rice. So we've got those two dishes coming and man, I can't wait to have them. So what can you tell us about the Noryangjin fish market, Sam? Well, it's a very fascinating market. Like, first off, it's massive. It's open 24 hours of the day. Yeah. And, get, and get this, if you want to go see the live auction, you've got to be here at 3 in the morning. <laughs> no way was that happening. Yeah, we're not, we're not quite that ambitious. <laughs> we were getting our and the market sleep. moves 250 to 300 tons of uh, fish and I guess you could call it marine seafood, products, seafood, yeah. daily. Every single, Every single day. day. So just imagine that. Yeah. So the banchan, the side dishes, have arrived at the table. And as you might expect, we're seeing lots of seafood here, or what I think is seafood, because it kind of looks unfamiliar. Tour time. Tour time. Well, we've got some kind of seaweed here. That's familiar. We also have the kimchi, the fermented cabbage, which is a staple. But then if you look over here, this looks like it could be octopus. Yeah? Yeah, it could be octopus. Could um, and could this, squid. not entirely sure, but it looks like a sea creature, guys. And we've got some wasabi. 
So I guess. <gasps> so the only thing to do now would be to try it. Yes. Try some you of the what? seafood. I'm gonna serve with my miso <laughs> soup. I'll drink the miso. <laughs> you try the fish. <laughs> Miso soup approved. So Sam the Brave going in for the octopus. Yeah, let's go try some. Uh, normally I would probably dip this into the red sauce, but I'll just go for a bite. How brave. Mm. What does mm. it taste like? It's really fresh. It doesn't have a strong taste. There's been absolutely no seasonings added. So you would definitely want to add some of the red goji junk sauce. Mm. Make it taste a lot Is better. Is it chewy? Yeah, it's chewy. Okay. My meal has arrived. Sam actually chose this because I had no clue what to get. But this is called Hui Dopop. And it's basically rice with vegetables and raw fish on top. Um, yeah. The rice actually comes here on the side in this separate little bowl. So what, what makes Dopop different from say Bokumbap, which is the mixed rice, is mm -hmm. the Dopop you get you know, your ingredients and then you get your rice. So they're not mixed yeah, together. They're not. Yeah. So yeah, lots of veggies here. Looks Ooh, like look at all the got, sesame seeds. I know, so many sesame seeds, some cabbage, some carrots, uh, that seaweed, looks delicious. cucumbers, and apparently I need to add this. Yeah, you need Correct? to put the you need to put the gochujang sauce. Oh, that right. looks like it's in a in a ketchup uh, you know dispenser it's not ketchup, container. Guys. You think that's enough? Yeah, that's good. Give it a try. Try it. Try it with a little bit of rice. Try a bit of fish rice? with some vegetables and rice. Let's grab a spoon. This is my first time having this ever. Exciting times. There. Messy. Yeah, make sure you get your fish. It would probably be easier with chopsticks. <laughs> Trying to get vegetables as well. Yeah. Rice, fish, vegetable, sauce. Big bite. Mm. That's good. How's that? And the fish is very mild. Like, it's a white fish. It's not very fatty, so... It doesn't have a strong flavor. It's like having sashimi, rice and veg. It's good. But it needs the sauce for sure. Otherwise, it would be a little bit bland. Mm. Maybe I should be adding wasabi to this. Just mix it all in. So your food is here now? Yeah, my dish has now arrived. Yours came first. Mm -hmm. So I'm having chobop, which is the Korean sushi. So take a look down here. You have 10 nicely displayed pieces. And as you can see, you have of course, the, the sushi, kind of the Korean chobop uh, appearance. It's got the rice and then the fish on top. So I'm just gonna grab a piece yep. and let's take it for a dunk in the soy let's sauce take with it wasabi. For a swim. Take it for a swim. No wasabi, come mm. on. I did put a bit on. Yeah? Oh. How is it? It's good. This is a really, it's not. It's a very chewy fish. It's not, um, it doesn't disintegrate me in your mouth. Like I'm yeah. really having to power through it's it. It's very light. I think we're both having the same fish. Yeah, it's very light. Very, it tastes good. Mm -hmm. um, but as you said, it's the kind of fish that it needs, uh, it needs a strong sauce to go with it. Either yeah. the gochujang or the soy sauce that comes down with the wasabi. Wow, there's some rice flying out of your mouth there. Mm -hmm. Whoops. <laughs> But yeah, if I had to venture a guess, I would say this is probably flounder, mm -hmm. would you say? I think so. So Sam is going to try my dish. Yeah, I forgot to add the rice. Yeah. Formed a little switcheroo. So I'm going to pluck from that all in. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but this is how I'm how decided to do it. it. I'm putting a bit more of the gochujang sauce on, mm -hmm. and then let's give that a nice strong yeah. mix. I guess I'm just used to like taking one spoonful of rice and then <laughs> dipping that into the soup or whatever side or I'm having with it. Yeah. So this, this, probably more effective. this is almost like a, <laughs> this is like a, 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 a hoi bibimbap. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if we're supposed to do it like this. From dope bop to bibimbap. But we've created something new. I am, maybe. I have decided to eat it like this. So I'm getting a bit of rice, I'm getting a bit of fish and veggies. Let's try that. What do you think? I actually prefer the cut of fish here. It's a little bit um, thinner, so it's easier to chew. Yeah. And I think having it with the extra ingredients, like uh -huh. with the salad and with the gochujang, does give it more of a flavor and taste. So if I had to pick between the two dishes, I would go with the hui dopa. I have to agree because I tried the 
what shall we call it? The sushi, the chobop. The chobop. And yeah, the cuts are a little bit thicker, which makes the fish a little bit chewier once mm -hmm. it's in your mouth. So I like mine better too. Yeah. This is good. It's a good order. Yeah. We also have another fish at the table that we haven't even gotten into. So if you take a look over here, I think this was also part of our banchan, so it came for free. And it's a, a grilled fish. And man, using chopsticks, this is gonna be hard. Let's use a spoon. How do we break this apart? Oh, there we go. There we go. Nice. And yeah, I have no idea what kind of fish this is, but it's been grilled. The, the bones are tiny, so I think we can probably just eat them. And you can probably have the skin as well, to be honest. Actually, maybe I'll pull these bones out just in case. Mm. How's that? That's nice. Again, no seasoning, so you're just tasting the fish. But because it's been grilled, it's got like that nice charcoaly flavor. It's good. Just lots of little bones. Be careful. But I guess you can eat the little bones. Meal time over. Meal time over. Look at this plate. No more chobop at no all. No more chobop. And I just <laughs> had a little bit of rice left. Yeah, we yeah, ate all the fish. We ate all the fish from the dopop. So anyways, in terms of price point, the Hui Dobop was 13,000 won and the Chobop was 15,000 won. So in total, 28,000 won. That's Iman Poton won. So you're looking at about probably about 24 US dollars. So yeah, really not bad value when you consider that, you know, we had a seafood feast here. It wasn't just the dishes that we had. We also had a lot of different side dishes that included seafood and fish. So overall, it was a big meal and definitely stuffed. And if you can come and visit the Noryangjin fish market, it is an experience. You come and you walk around, of course, and you experience the market and then to come out and have food. It's definitely something we recommend doing in Seoul. So it is snack time in Seoul. What are we doing? I'm super excited for our snack today. This is a typical Korean snack that you find often on the street. It's called dakbogi. But today we are going to have it in a specialty store. Over the years, I guess this has become so popular that not only do they sell it on the streets, now they have dedicated restaurants just for it. So that is exactly what we're going to do. Let's go check this out. All right, let's eat some dakbogi. Lead the way. Dakboki has arrived and it is a fast food masterpiece. Let's have a look here at the plate. So the key ingredient here is the soft rice cakes that you see right here. So aside from that we also have some quail eggs, we have some fish cakes, and of course the red spicy gochujang sauce. Yeah the gochujang sauce is what really makes it and that is really spicy but also it's quite sweet. Uh, also quite sweet too. Let's try one. Ooh la la. Mm, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, so it's like a very chewy rice cake. And like you mentioned, the sauce is really sweet but also spicy. So it's like you feel it burning in the back of your <laughs> mouth, but it's really sweet in the front. And when we first came, when we oh wow, mm. oh and look, just arrived. This is our duigim and gun mandu, which is our pan-fried dumplings and basically our assorted battered objects. So aside from the dakboki, we also got something else, right? Yes, so take a look down here. This is the duigim that I was mentioning before. And this is these are the awesome pan-fried mandu, mm -hmm. which are called gun mandu. And they're, oh, they're some of my favorite things to eat. Before I dig into those, I'll show you some of the other things. So we have like, I believe this is the kokoma, the sweet potato. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also been deep fried. This is the dewey game over here. And then there's hopak, which is a pumpkin. Yeah. And also another favorite of mine. And there's a few other things. Um, some of it's uh, ojingo, which is squid. And then there's something that looks a little bit like gimbap that's been deep fried too. Yeah, so, so it's almost like tempura for people yes, who aren't exactly very familiar that. with this. Exactly, that's a really good way of putting it. Similar to tempura. So I will start out with the mandu. 
And so we have some soy sauce over here. We do. But we're dipping. But my favorite way of doing it is to make it go for a swim in the dakogi sauce. Oh. So just putting it right in You're there. You're making it spicy. Go for a swim, my friend. Okay. So there we go. It is ready to eat. And this is going to be tricky to bite. This is massive. But <laughs> I will try. One, <coughs> one big bite. That's so good. I really like the goon mandu, the pan fried mandu on its own. Mm -hmm. But when you put the dog boogie sauce, it's like, man, you're taking it from like an eight or a nine to a ten. <laughs> so delicious. So, so delicious. Okay, so I am going for the pumpkin. Your turn to try the doigim. Ooh. I'm gonna dip it in the soy sauce because the other one is burning my mouth at the moment. It's pretty strong. So there we go. Pumpkin battered with soy sauce. How's that? That's good. You know, I like the combination, sweet and spicy, but a bit of salty with the soy sauce. You can kind of alternate between the two. It's good. Mmm. Go going in for more. Going for another, and before that's they how, disappear. That's how you know it's good. Before Sam gets to them. Start, start having your second bite before I even stop filming. Mm-hmm. That's when I know you like it. <laughs> So my time to try the pure dog boogie. So I've got my fish cake and I'm gonna skewer that with rice cake. So How about an egg, Sam? How come you're not <laughs> grabbing no, an egg? I'm not a big fan of egg, so those will be yours. <laughs> wow, delicious. And guys, if you're trying rice cake, green rice cakes for the first time, be sure to chew them really well because- Oh they, yeah, they can yeah, get stuck. They can get stuck in your throat. <laughs> So. Oh, and you know what I also like? What? They give you this light broth to go along with the dakboki. And this just comes for free. Let's and try that. I like it because it's very light and mild. So if you need a break from the spice, just have a sip of that. I think it's to calm down your stomach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to slow the burn. So that was almost a really embarrassing price point because we barely had enough money. Yeah, we kind of <laughs> forgot how low we were on cash reserves. So <laughs> and like we were scrounging together our last coins to pay for that. But we had enough to pay. We literally just had enough. Okay, so price point, how much was that? So that was 12,500 won, so man, each on Obek won. Mm -hmm. And that's basically uh, about roughly 10 US dollars, a little, yeah. just a little bit more than 10 US dollars. Mm -hmm. So awesome value, I mean, that was a lot of food. We ordered a double portion of the Dokuki plus the Goon Mandu plus the Dukim, so a lot of food. Really delicious. We're both full. Our bellies are a little bit, you know, yes. feeling the burn of the And spice. most importantly, lesson learned, guys, before you go into a restaurant, check your wallet. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> we, should, we should know this by now, but you'd be surprised how often this happens. <laughs> too often. Way too often. Okay, let's go home. Okay, so what's on the menu for today, Sam? All right, so for lunch today, we're having tonkas and udon. And this place is right nearby our apartment where we're staying at in Hapjong here in Seoul. And I just happened to discover it. I was at the sauna the other day and I was walking around and I'm like, oh, I'm really hungry afterwards. It's like, I don't know, like probably really late at night, 10 or 11. So I saw this place outside that had a huge tonkas sign. I'm like, I gotta come in here and try it. Yeah, and, and he came without me. Yeah, and let me tell you, they have the biggest portions of tonkas. So when it comes here, we're gonna be in for a treat. All right, so we need to show you guys what showed up at the table like two seconds ago. Yeah. So this I, is insane. I wasn't kidding when I said the portions were huge. Like here's Massive. here's my hand for a sense of scale. This is bigger than like both of my hands. It's bigger out. than your head. It's bigger than okay, it's way bigger, bigger. It's bigger than your stomach. It's way bigger than my face. <laughs> okay. So basically, this is a Japanese dish that has become popular in Korea. Mm -hmm. It was invented in the 19th century. It's basically a breaded piece of pork cutlet. Yeah. And it's deep fried. Mm -hmm. So if you look down here, you can see that it has a gravy sauce over it. Ooh, but you can also get it in Korea. 
country as well uh, with curry. Yeah, you with can, the curry sauce. Sometimes you get it without sauce. It just has cheese stuffed inside. That's mm -hmm. also really good too. Yeah. And there's just a whole bunch of different variations. And it's become such a staple in Korea that you can find it almost anywhere. You can find it at gimbap restaurants. You can find it at a restaurant like here that specializes in it. Yeah. And you can also find it in Japanese Korean restaurants. So. And you know what else? We've had similar dishes to this around the world, wouldn't you say? Yeah, we sure have. So, so we've, schnitzel it, comes to it, mind. It reminds me of schnitzel. Um, in Austria and Germany yeah and it also reminds me of Milanese in Argentina so mm -hmm. this is the kind of just a classic pork cutlet meal and I'm just gonna take my first bite yeah, here. yeah you're just soaking it in the gravy soaking it in like the gravy I love this stuff I know it looks so good it's so good I actually want some I have food envy at the moment <laughs> All right, so my food has arrived as well, and when I saw the size of the bowl, it was like, oh my gosh, this could feed a family or like a couple. But check it out. This is like a massive bowl. Yeah, like, I, knew, I knew you were gonna like this. Place. I don't know how I'm going to finish all of this, but basically, I'm having udon, which is a thick type of wheat flour noodle. We've got some greens here, no idea what kind of greens. It looks like maybe some fish cakes. Some tempura um yeah and we asked for the spicy so we'll see what that's like actually he told me it's gonna be very spicy very spicy <laughs> <laughs> well well this is gonna be kind of messy mm. what do you think my tongue was immediately on fire. That's <laughs> what so he was not kidding about the spice. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> Let's try with some greens. I don't know what this is. Oh man. I feel like I should have tied up my hair today. This is like a messy meal. You really have to get involved here. Mm. Spicy? All right, being the nice guy that I am, I was kind enough to share. I mean, I did have like a Fred Flintstone size portion. So. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> look at how much he's willing to share these that's, two little yeah. nuggets, basically. Yeah, that's still, I was planning on eating the whole thing. So, yeah. yeah. So I want you to try it. Well, I'm going to steal some of your gravy first of all. There we go. Actually, I've already tried this. When you weren't looking, I took a piece, like when the so this is this is your arrived. second sneak second bite, bite. Then I didn't even see you have your first one. How is that? It's good. I just love this sweet gravy. It works really well with the pork. Really nice. So how are you enjoying that meal so far? Loving it. And what came to mind is this reminds me so much of the, like the different kind of bodegones we used to go to in Buenos Aires. And what the bodegones were was like these traditional restaurants that had kind of a simple decor inside. Everything was all about the food. And this is what this place is about. Like mm -hmm. it's very simple inside, it's not fancy. The prices are very reasonable, but as you can see by the portions that we have, like we are being fed. They do very not skimp well. out here. This is They're almost nice. like this is almost like a double meal here. Yeah, it's kind of gonna be a challenge to finish <laughs> all of this. Well, I'm gonna finish my tongue cast. You've got your work cut out with your udon. Well, Sam, you did very well. Yeah, look at that. That deserves an A plus for effort. I, on the other hand, you know what? You almost finished. You did almost like finished. half? You, no, you did way more than half. Come on. You and you know what? Few, like, My noodles. tongue is on fire. That's the reason I have to stop. It's like burning. Yeah. But anyways, so, let's talk about price point. So on the price point, so my tongue cast was 8,000 won and your udon was 6,000 won. So it yeah. came to 14,000 won in total, which is mm -hmm. mass satchel won. And that's roughly like under under 12 US dollars, about 11 something US dollars. So mm -hmm. it's a lot of food for not a lot of money. And now that I found this place just a few days ago, we're definitely going to be coming back here quite regularly, I think. Yes, but next up, I need a popsicle to cool down. <laughs> Today's 
video we are planning to visit a traditional Korean tea house and it is super hot and humid outside but it's one of those things you just have to do in Seoul. So we're just dealing with the heat and we're gonna drink some hot tea and have some rice cakes. Let's sweat Let's it out. Down. have arrived tell us what we're having yeah so the one that I ordered is called kepija and you mm -hmm. can have a look at it down here it comes right. in a nice like kind of fancy Ooh. traditional cup it's almost like a soup bowl yeah yeah it really is and this is a si Korean cinnamon tea so mm -hmm. I'm really excited about this I love anything with cinnamon so this should be great and we also ordered some sweets to go along with the tea. So can you tell us what are we having there? Yeah, so this is really exciting. Mm -hmm. We've got persimmon slices. Ooh. They've been dried. And then we have some special uh, dok, which is the Korean rice cakes. And they appear to have... Um, Looks like rice krispies around them. Yeah, they're actually, instead of cakes, they're more like rice crisps. And I think we've we've had these ones before, like yeah. several years ago, and, <laughs> and they're really airy. They're almost like, uh, like rice puffs, Ooh. but they're sweet. So I'm trying the tea, and I think you were the clever one today. You got yours as iced, mine is <laughs> piping hot, and it wants to be like, I don't know, 35 degrees with high humidity. Yeah, so it's really hot out. I'm a little bit crazy, but at least it is air conditioned in here. Oh, wow. Wow. That, that is like intense cinnamon flavor. Yeah, it kind of smells like Christmas over here. It does, and it's 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 wonderful. Like it's it's natural cinnamon. It's not that artificial like garbagey type. It's <laughs> <laughs> which you know are unfortunately in a lot of products. This is real authentic cinnamon, and it's got a bit of a kick to it. Okay, so for mine, I got the Maisil Cha, which is a green plum tea, and it's got ice cubes in it. Much needed today. <laughs> You can actually see behind you, There's a, here's the air conditioner, guys, that huge That's air conditioner. That's so, so hot. And this is so good. It's like juice. It's like a sweet, syrupy plum juice. Refreshing? Mm-hmm. So good. I think you're going to need to share that one with me. to try the snacks now. Yeah, so I'm gonna start off with having one of the uh, sliced dried persimmons. Mm -hmm. And it appears that there's some like uh, chunks of nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what that is. If I had to guess without even tasting it, I would say maybe walnut. Mm -hmm. mm. How's that? It's good. It's sweet, but not too overpowering. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really taste the persimmon. It's kind of like a little bit like a jam. And I think I was right. I'm pretty sure this is walnuts, hodu. So, really tasty. Goes well with the tea. And we have a second snack. So you want to try one of those? Sure. Oh wow. Mm. Yeah, these are one of the puffed rice cakes. Let's have a closer. Look. Really good. Again, they're like fluffy inside. Again, not too like strongly flavored or sugary, mm -hmm. which is really nice because the teas are quite sweet. So mm -hmm. this is a nice light snack to go along with it. So I would say that was a very relaxing experience. It was almost like whisper quiet in there with classical music softly yeah. playing. The, the cool thing is like when you arrive to these establishments really early, you can sometimes be the first person there. Yeah, and we were the only ones there. Yeah, and it, it, I mean, there are some people now, yeah. but while we were having our, our tea, we were the only people there. It's yeah, pretty that was awesome. pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Okay, so let's talk about the price for that. So the price point was 19,500 won, which is man guchon obek won. And that's roughly about 17 US dollars right now. So again, it was a little pricey, but I mean, again, we're in the Insadong area and it is very touristy. And you're paying for that like kind of authentic tea house, traditional tea house experience. Exactly. Oh 
my! This morning we came to Building 63 with the intention of going up to the top for city views and it was insane. Yeah. Insane. Well, okay, first off guys, 35 degrees outside yeah. and we had to walk a kilometer from the station to, to building, building 63. <laughs> so we're like dripping sweat. You can imagine like these two waygooks just like pouring sweat down. And then we go here and there's like about a 30 to one hour uh, wait, wait time just to, so we're like, to get the elevator. You know we need to cool down. So we're going with something authentic Korean. Uh, we're getting bibim naengmyeon, which is going to be mine, and mul naengmyeon for yours. So basically these are, are buckwheat noodles. They're served cold. Yours comes in a cold broth with vegetable egg and a bunch of other ingredients. And the difference between yours and mine is that mine doesn't come with the cold broth. Mine comes with gochujang sauce and basically the rest is very similar. So our food is finally here. I am starving because I skipped breakfast today. So let's have a look at this perfect summer dish. I'm having mul naengmyeon. And this is basically a bowl of buckwheat noodles. They're handmade and they're in a bowl of chilled icy broth. So I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's like slushy. My broth yeah. actually has chunks of ice in it. So you super see that refreshing. Ice in there, huh? Yep. And this is like the quintessential Korean summer dish. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you'll also notice that the vegetables are raw. So I have some cucumbers here, some radish, and of course, it's topped off with a hard-boiled egg and some sesame seeds. Yeah, and as a side yeah. dish, you got some bulgogi. I got bulgogi, which yeah, is the, the marinated Korean sweet beef. I'm gonna sweet start beef. with this actually. Mmm, I'm mushroom too. How's that? This is good. But let's move on to the main dish. So normally in restaurants, they actually give you scissors cut into the noodles but they haven't done that here so it's gonna be a little messy to eat <laughs> so excuse that you're gonna have to break it off with your teeth mm -hmm. go for it exactly mm. 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 oh my god super chewy huh mm. there you go there you go you cannot break them off with your teeth. Super, super chewy noodles. How do they taste? Mm, good. I need to chew. Give me a second. So that was good. It kind of tastes like cold spaghettis, which sounds a bit nasty, plain cold spaghettis. Um, but because it's made out of buckwheat, it has a very distinct flavor, so it's really nice. And it's also taken on the flavor from the broth. It's like a little bit tangy and savory. So I quite like it. I'm enjoying it. I was super hot before sitting down at the table. So this is going to be a really refreshing meal. So yeah. Good and you know what? Later on, you can drink the soup with a spoon. There you go. So Sam's meal is kind of similar to mine, but slightly different. Slightly different. Mine is called bibim naengmyeon. Mm -hmm. And the biggest difference between this and the mul naengmyeon is, of course, that I have gochujang, the red pepper paste, yeah. instead of the broth. Yeah. So that's really the main difference. The buckwheat noodles are the same, the vegetables are the same, although I think I may have slightly have different more veggies. Vegetables. I have more vegetables than yours. And you know what? And you I have, have an egg. Kimchi. You have kimchi and in I have, there. I have kimchi and I have an egg on top. Ooh. So my goal here is basically to mix it all around a bit. So I'm going to mix that around, try to disperse that sauce a little. You know what? I'm kind of jealous of yours. <laughs> I really like that sauce and I, I like I think I got kimchi. the best one. Oh, and the coolest thing is they did give me some of the, the cool broth on the yeah. side. Basically, I think as a way to cool down this summer. Yeah. Because otherwise, I'm guessing this is probably not served with it normally. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's try that. So, I'm just going to go in for some noodles here. It's, this is going to be messy. It's so chewy. Wait and see. Mm -hmm. Oh, you took a baby bite. That's cheating. Take nah, a mouthful. I <laughs> mm. Wow. So, yeah, the noodles are really good, but the overwhelming taste here is of the gochujang sauce. Gochujang. So, man, it hits you hard. Yeah. It's very spicy, but man, I love gochujang. So this is like, this is, I definitely ordered the right one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not gonna share. So we finally found the scissors halfway through the meal. We finally smartened up a little bit here. Yeah. So. This is how you do it. 
yeah. put it in. The noodles are so long and chewy that we were struggling. Like it's so easy to choke on them. So yeah, you just take the scissors, snip, snip. And now mine. I'll get my chopsticks out of here. Now this is probably not the official way to do it here in Korea. I'm sure there's a, 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 a really good technique that normal Koreans would use, but this is Jiguk style. All right. Where we go? I think we can go back to eating. <laughs> Are your lips burning, Sam? You're looking a little red over there. <laughs> Tongue's on fire. Like, my gochujang was like really potent, man. It was wow. spicy. <laughs> Super spicy. Okay, so we finished our meal. We're gonna be heading up to the, the viewing deck on building 63 soon. But let's talk about the price first. So it was 8,000 each, so it came to 16,000 won, won. And that's roughly like about 14 US dollars. So really good value. I mean, this is kind of a fancy building in here. So. Yeah. But I will say that I have seen uh, the Nengmyung and the Mul Nengmyung for about 6,000 won elsewhere. So, but this still was a really good price and the quality was excellent, so. Yeah, so if you happen to visit Korea during the summer months, these are two dishes you absolutely must try. Absolutely. lunch we are going to be having samgyeopsal and that is a Korean pork belly that you cook yourself at the table it's like really fatty pork so it's gonna be nice and crisp yeah it kind of reminds me a little bit of Canadian bacon except more thickly sliced <laughs> bacon for lunch um, but yeah I should also mention if it sounds a little bit windy in here it's because we've got the AC blasting and there's the fan. fans on in every single direction the, the fans going and the TVs on yeah so and that's a sign that it's a really hot day here in Korea and guys this is basically your classic Korean barbecue. Mm -hmm. It should be fun! So our side dishes have also arrived. You want to give us a tour of the table? Sure, so let's take a look over here. So we've got some different uh, pickled basically vegetables over yeah. here. And this over here is the garlic. This is one of my favorite oh, things. Yeah. One of my favorite things to add to the, to the Korean barbecue. And I believe this is called mano. Mm -hmm. And then we have something called uh, samjang, which is a mixture of the red pepper paste, the gochujang, and the duenjang sauce. So it's kind of like a mixture of the two. Awesome sauce. Nice. And then over kimchi. here, we've got the kimchi, of course. It looks like we've got some uh, kind of pink radish. And yeah, salad. we are good to go. And this over here, it looks like crab. Yeah, and I didn't mention this over here is kind of like a dipping sauce for the samgyeop sauce. So we're just cooking it now, it's sizzling, and it's going to be ready to eat soon. basically cut the meat into little pieces so they can cook a little bit further and get nice and golden. Also I should mention this meat isn't seasoned at all and they didn't add any oil to cook it either. I think the idea is just that the fat is going to start melting and that'll allow it to cook, you know, cook in its own fat and give it more flavor. So yeah, we're just waiting now. Waiting for it to turn golden and crispy. I like mine really burnt. Yeah, me too. Which is kind of strange because like if I'm eating steak or something else like that, I, I tend to like it a bit more rare, yeah. a bit more raw. But with Sam Gupsal, I find it the optimum when it's like, when it's charred a bit. Yeah, it's so fatty that you kind of want it to be golden and crispy, otherwise it's just like chewing fat. And I'm not a huge fan of that. So it is time to start cooking some garlic now that the meat's almost yeah, done. Yeah, we're, we're at that stage now. And I find that it's best just to put it kind of on the periphery of the grill so it doesn't get in the way of the meat. So we're just gonna start plopping that down. And with the garlic, you have to pay a lot of attention because it can burn quite fast. And, uh, so you're gonna really wanna really wanna pay attention to that. Mm. So we'll maybe put half of it on now and then we can put half of it on later. Okay, so time to make this happen. Let's assemble your first bite. It sure is time. I can't wait for this. So I'm grabbing my piece of Sam Gapsal, mm -hmm. a Korean pork belly. 
And you know what? I am I'm going for a super super one here. So I'm putting my garlic, my manual on here. A little bit of samjang. Put that right like that. And a little bit of some salad. Wow, so that looks that's pretty much perfect. Big bite. It's gonna be a huge bite. And now I'm gonna roll that all up. Come some later. Oh, we get jiggy too. Ooh. Empty jiggy? Ah, come some later. So now the expert roller is gonna turn this into yes. a little melt-sized ball. It's all ready. Just scrunch it up into a ball. <laughs> and one shot, one, one bomb. Shot. Mm. <laughs> oh man. Nah, it's so good. Yeah. It's been ages since I've had Korean barbecue. Uh, <laughs> I have to say this place is really nailing it. Like this is the real authentic deal. We're here in Seoul, Korea now, and we're having like just an amazing Samgyeopsal experience. Loving it. So it is now time for my first bite. So let's do this right. I'm going to grab my lettuce leaf, grab my chopsticks, and I want this piece right here. This is Ooh, just that looks nice and crispy. Golden to perfection. I'm also going to add some rice to mine. They just brought us some rice. So maybe like just a bite size. Yeah, uh, put that in there. Yeah. A little bit of this sauce for flavor. Samjang. Some garlic. I'm going to be getting lots of kisses tonight, right Sam? <laughs> Yeah, we're, mm. you know, you know the, the nice thing though is that we're gonna have equally bad breath. <laughs> we'll both so. have garlic breath. Yeah. Some of this pickled stuff. Okay, and that's probably a big enough bite for me. You're going all out. That is a huge bite. This that's bigger be, than mine. I think this may be two bites. Uh, yeah, go for one. two. I don't want you one. choking on it here. Uh. Oh, you did it all. Mm. How's that? A lot of competing flavors. Mm -hmm. Taste the garlic, you can taste the samgyeopsal, the samjang sauce. What's gonna take you a while to chew? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just as, as you were chewing that, I'll point out that we typically, the reason why it's not busy here right now is we typically are, are coming and filming really early, like, like 11.30 before people tend to come in around 12.30 mm -hmm. or 1. And we're doing that so so that we kind of have the place to ourselves. Really so that was really good. I really enjoyed that first bite. I think my favorite thing is the whole garlic clove in there. Like, it's not the same as eating raw garlic, of course. It's nice and golden and it just gives it a nice flavor overall. I also really enjoyed the spicy sauce. The samjang. It's just so nice when it all mixes together. And we wow. have a lot left to eat, guys. So it, yeah. is, it is chow time. Yeah. And you know what? The meat was not fatty. I was expecting it to be like a little chewy and greasy, but we've been letting it cook for an extra long time. So I think that's the trick. If you don't like fatty I meat. I think we got a nice cut too. Yeah, this is good stuff. Going in for number two. And you know what? If you're not a big fan of spicy sauces, yeah, they also give you a pretty simple sauce that you can dip so your meat in. You could just pick up your, your slice of salmon gap salt, uh -huh. your Korean uh, pork belly, yeah, and just you kind of just kind of like coat it in this, which is like kind of like oil and uh, kind of a salt, salt mixture. Well, I don't know about coating it. I would have just <laughs> dipped it a little bit <laughs> for some salt. <laughs> How's that? Nice. Yeah. yeah. It enhances the flavor for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good. And in true Korean fashion, I think we have some kind of game show happening in the background on the TV. Oh wait, no, it's a sporting event. You know what? Before there was a, like a Korean drama, yeah. and everyone was wearing handball. So pretty cool programming on today. <laughs> So aside from all of the meat, they also brought us a jigging, which is kind of like a soup or a stew. Yeah, that was really nice of them. Yeah. I think this was complimentary service. Yeah, so this one has the kimchi, the cabbage, has a little bit of pork yeah. as well. It also has the tofu, and the tofu, dubu. a little bit of everything. There's the dubu. So I eat this by grabbing some rice first, got some rice here, and then I dip it in the Taking the it for soup. a swim. That's my style. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it or not, but that's how I roll. That's Audrey's special way of eating Korean soup. Korean mm. stew. Is that tasty? The meat is super tender. Super, super tender. Spicy? Not too spicy. It's actually mild in comparison to what we've been having. 
Also, I'd like to point out we're having purple rice right now. Normally they just give you plain white rice. So this feels a little bit fancy in a way. So yeah, lovely meal here. I'm really enjoying this. So we've been at it for a while with this meal. What's our progress update? So we finished round one. We had a tiny bit of snack cups all left. So if you look down here, I'll explain what's going on. So as you can see here, this is the, the last of the Sam capsule. We just yep. have like about six pieces. Mm -hmm. But what we have done is we put the kimchi on here yeah. and the rest of the garlic. Mm. So oh, we've got lots of garlic going on there. We've got some tasty bits left to try. So I think the kimchi has been cooked enough, ready to try it. Oh, how hot. <laughs> I bet it is. It's fresh off the grill. Wow. Mm. It's very different from having it like raw, the way it's normally prepared. Yeah. Because it, it still it kind of gets rid of a little bit of the spice. Yeah. And it cooks it a bit, so it just has more of a like it's a little bit less crispy. But I don't know somehow it I, I feel like it enhances the flavor a little bit. Mm. So I really do like it grilled as well as raw. You know what? It's kind of hard to concentrate on what you're saying because just behind you we have some very intense scenes as part of a, a modern Korean drama. <laughs> I think one of the main characters might be having a flashback to an accident wow. that deeply affected his life. And I can't even watch it. You're the only one who gets to Yeah, you're here. missing out here. All right. Well, we cleaned that up. The grill is Nothing left empty. on the grill. Guys, that was a glorious Korean barbecue. Like, the best Korean barbecue, seriously. Awesome stuff. So let's talk about the price point for that. Okay, so the price point was that was man won per person, so 10,000 Korean won. So it came to 20,000 Korean won in total, which is Iman won. And that's roughly about 17, 18 US dollars right now. So excellent value. Yeah, and we still have food left over, especially we still, the side dishes. Yeah, we still have some banchan to take care of, but yeah. we've taken care of the principal barbecue, which yeah. was the, the main mission here. Good morning from Nam De Moon Market. Today we have chosen to skip lunch and have lots of snacks at this market instead, so I'm pretty excited for that. Yeah, so Nam De Moon Sijung, Nam De Moon Market is the oldest market in Seoul and it's mm -hmm. also one of the best places to get Korean street food. So we're just gonna go on a rampage and eat as much <laughs> <laughs> Korean street food as we possibly can. A rampage? Can. You heard it here first. Let's go eat. So I got myself a potato corn dog. So this is a hot dog on a stick. It's been breaded, I guess. And then they've attached these french fries as well. So it's like really over the top. And I'm going to add some ketchup. <laughs> wow, look at that. And what else can you put? This Maybe is, some spicy yeah, this, sauce. This is a very uniquely Korean hot dog. So All yeah, right. put, some, put some spicy sauce on that too. Come out, come out spice. Oh, Ooh, that's thick. Whoa. Whoa. Man, that looks good. All right. Look at all the French. You can see you can see the French fries so well on this there. This is my first time trying this, so we'll see. Oh, it's hot. Ooh. Super hot, huh? Mm. Very hot. Mm. Oh, wow. This is like fast food to the max. So what do you think? Oh, it's very good, actually. Is there a lot of batter on the outside or? Yeah, you can see it there. All right, time for Sam to share his thoughts. Yeah, so my turn to try as well. This is my first time to actually have this. Mm -hmm. I've had like a lot of Korean street food and I've like walked by this many times but I've never actually had it. Yeah. So exciting times here. I'm just gonna go in for a big bite. Big bite, he says. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you've got some stuff stuck to your lips Oh there. my gosh, yeah. That, you can really see the, the hot dog in there. Yeah. So you do taste the hot dog. Then you really taste the batter, but you also taste the, the crispiness of the french fries too. Mm -hmm. So it's really tasty. I'm really enjoying it. It's delicious. Yeah. It's kind of like having your hot dog on a bun with a side of fries, except it's all been rolled into <laughs> yeah. one. It's all been put into one, one thing right here. 
So what was the price for this one? So this one was 3,000 won, Samchon won, so a little bit less than 3 US dollars. Oh, thank you. Can I just say it? We're trying odeng, which is a Korean fish cake. And ah. This is one of the most common Korean street foods you can find like, yeah. everywhere. It's often places where you get dakbokki. So yeah, and it's so cheap. This is usually so fifty cents. Yeah, this one was more expensive because it is in Yeonbyeon. It's yeah. it was one thousand won, ton won. But yeah. let's try that. Put a little bit of soy sauce on it. Yeah, and at first glance, it looks a lot like a pancake that's been folded no. and then put on a little stick. Nothing like a pancake. Oh, <laughs> A fishy more, pancake. Yeah. Tastes very fishy. Actually, doesn't have that strong of a taste. Um, I would kind of describe it. It has like a bit of a spongy exterior. Mm -hmm. um, spongy texture. Yeah. So it's really good. Um, I'm enjoying it big time. So after coming to this market so many times while I lived here, I just discovered something new. This market has two levels, so we're going into the basement area right now to see what we can find in terms of food. Okay, so we're here in the basement level of Nam De Moon Market. Found a little treasure of a, of a restaurant here, just a tiny little hole in the wall place. And yeah. We are having Miyak Gimbap. And if you've never had Gimbap before, these are basically your Korean rice rolls. It's kind yeah. of like your, a Korean form of like a maki or sushi. And what makes these different from the ones that you typically get at Gimbap restaurants is these are actually baby Gimbap. Yeah, they're rolls. miniature in size. Right, so a normal Gimbap roll would be really thick and bigger and go longer. And then it would be sliced up like this. Yeah. But these Miyak Gimbaps have not been sliced, they've just been made into little rolls. And yeah. So Let's try it. Looks good. So it's a little seaweed roll. It has sesame seeds. And let's have a look at the filling. It looks oh, like radish. Delicious. Yeah, we've got radish. Radish and carrot. We've got radish and carrot. I think it's a pure Ooh. vegetarian one. Vegetarian friendly. And mm. they gave us a sauce. Right, let's try that. Let's try the sauce. Oh yeah, that's like a... Uh, it's almost like a wasabi sauce. Ooh. Ooh, so it is spicy. I heard her say it's not spicy. Yeah. Man, <laughs> good thing you're trying it. And another cool thing. She gave us... Uh, soup. Yep, this and is a soup. Cups. This is a soup that you often get with the with an, when you get olding or other kind of fish cakes. So it's a it's a light soup. Yeah, so like soy base with chives. All right, Audrey, your turn. My turn. I'll pick one of these. Maybe one from the top, actually. Oh, I wouldn't mix it too much. No. <laughs> You're gonna be in for a surprise. And it's still warm. The rice is still yeah. warm. It's been just, just been lot. freshly made. That's a lot of wasabi. Yeah. Wow. It's like a was it's like it's like a wasabi mustard. Ooh, you're 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 feeling it. <laughs> I knew you were gonna you were gonna be in pain after dunking it in that deep. That is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have another bite without so much on it. So, what do you think of the of the miyak kimbap? I like it. It's a perfect little snack. Ooh, I want to spray some sesame seeds there. It's a perfect little snack. You know, you can have it packaged in these little containers. Take it to go. Eat it at a park. Take it home. And take it easy on the sauce, guys. A l one one little one little dunk is enough. Don't. Uh, don't go in too heavy like we did. <laughs> so we just found the jackpot here. Yeah, we found a place that sells all kinds of like Western and American products here. We've got peanut butter. We've got like the Swiss hot chocolate. Ooh, chocolate. Nutella. We've got Nutella. We've got special kinds of coffee. Oh, oh I thought that was veggie mic for a second. No, it's not. We've got Quaker oats in the background. So. Are you coveting anything? <laughs> 
But we, we're, le we're leaving here soon, so I don't think we can buy anything, but I would get the massive jar of peanut butter. That would be on my wish list. So we may have come to Namde Moon for the street food, however, this is also a great place if you're looking to get a bargain on basically anything. You can buy shoes here, clothes, winter jackets, toys for children, school supplies, basically anything you can imagine, you'll find it here, plus food. Hello, I say, uh, one, one jin bun, a hundred to say, hundred to say, Ah, come up from the so somebody found another snack. What did you get? Yeah, we just found this place that specializes in mandu and different other kinds of steamed buns. And we're getting something called Wong Jinbang. And Wong refers to the giant size of this. Like I don't look how big this is. I'm putting this in my hand. Yeah. It's piping hot, so I'm gonna put it back in the bag. <laughs> Try not to burn yourself. It's bigger than my hand, so that's why you get the name Wong. Jinbong, I believe it's gonna have red bean paste inside, so let's take a bite. Oh yeah. That's Look good. at all that. Oh man. Ooh. That's so good. It's been mashed up and it's very sweet, but you really taste the bean as well. Too. Yeah. So and it kind of looks like it has a, a fluffy bread. Texture, yeah, it's no? very it's very fluffy bread. It's piping hot and you can see the probably see the steam coming off of it, so I don't want to put it away. Mmm, that's so good. And this one was really reasonably priced. It was 1,500 won. So, total big one. So, a little bit less than 150 US dollars. So, great value, man. I'm loving this. So, something cool about Namde Moon Market here in Seoul is that you can go down these little side alleys and you have like these kind of tiny little hole in the wall restaurants. So, we're going to show you a bit of what that looks like. Looks like we stumbled upon some kind of musical slash cultural performance in the middle of the market, so we're gonna check it out before that ends. <laughs> What did you get? I got myself kokuma, which is Korean sweet potato. Man, is it ever? It's been freshly steamed. Like it was just steaming right in front of us, so you can tell that it's hot. So I'm gonna just go in for a bite. You can see. Look at that. Peel back Ooh. the skin a bit. You know what? You can actually eat the skin. I've seen. I. I. I've, when I lived here before, I did eat the skin. So I'm gonna try a little bit first without the skin. It almost looks like pumpkin in terms of color and texture. Oh, it's very sweet, very rich, very tastes really, really, really good. Would you have this for dessert? This is like this is like a natural fruit dessert, basically. But I mean, it's not even really a fruit; it's a sweet potato. <laughs> so I'm gonna try a bit of the skin this time. Mm. My advice, honestly, is to eat the skin. It's really good. And how much was this? This was only Chon one, 1001. So again, less than one US dollar. Wow. Hamuk Sara? Ah, Canada Sara. Ah, Canada Sara. Oh, Hamuk Mal Chareo. Ah, no, Chao Oh, boy, so. Oh, come up some yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so for our final snack of the day, we are having hotok, and I feel like we've shown this snack probably a million times on our channel. But we just like it, it is our that favorite much. Korean street food, though. Yeah, whenever we see it, we're like, oh, we gotta get hotok. And it's the best way to end off a Korean street food yes. taste test because you're getting something really mm. sweet, really tasty. 
So. Yeah, so again, in case you, you haven't memorized this by now, a hotak is like this fat, fluffy pancake, and inside it's filled with brown sugar, cinnamon, and pine nuts, and it's just amazing. It's amazing. It's it, amazing. It, it's, it's cooked and made hot, so while you're biting into it, you get like these gooey bites, mm. and it's usually not until you get to about the middle of it that, that you start really getting a lot of the sauce that's Kinda inside. Sweet there. It's oozing that sugar. Look at that. It's so hot, so warm. And it was only 1,000 won. Less oh, wow. Than a dollar. Wow, that's a great so. price, especially for Namdi Moon. Uh. Like, it's typically it's 1,000 won elsewhere, but uh -huh. Namdi Moon can be more expensive for sure. So hot. Ooh. Piping hot, huh? So, what's the verdict? Good quality Namdi. one? It's always great. Mm. Time for me to try mine. You're right. There's no such thing as a bad whole talk. Yeah. This is like my favorite thing we've eaten at the market today. It always is. Always whole does. Talk, always win. Number one. For the win right at the end. Leaving satisfied. Leaving very satisfied. That was, I mean, actually, I knew I was going to eat a lot, but I actually ended up eating a whole lot more than I originally planned. Like. That was a pig out for the ages, but in a good way. So if you're coming to Nam Dinh Nguyen Market, I think something that you should understand is it is a little bit more touristy than some of the other Korean, more local Korean markets. And you can expect to pay a little bit more for some of the Korean street food. Uh, a prime example of that is when we had Odeng. Uh, normally I, I picked that up uh, elsewhere for maybe 500 won, Obae Kwon, whereas here I paid a thousand, so I paid double. But there were some, some treats that I had that were exactly the same price, including the Hotok, which was a thousand here, also a thousand in most other places. So pretty good. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this Korean street food video and be sure to stay tuned on our channel every Monday. We have new videos coming out from South Korea. And if you're new to our channel, check out our 50 things to do in Seoul guide. So we'll see you soon with new Korean content. Lunch time in Seoul. We are having lunch today at like four in the afternoon because we've been out sightseeing. So we are starving, so, so hungry. And today we're going to be having samgyetang. Did I pronounce that right? Samgyetang, yeah. There you go. And this is a ginseng chicken soup. And Sam has ordered a variation of the dish. So he's having ginseng chicken porridge. So we're going to show you what those two dishes look like. So because this restaurant specializes in Korean ginseng chicken, there's actually five different ones you can choose from. So let's take a look at the menu. And you have the one that we ordered is supposed to be good for your health. Now there's another one that's good for beauty. For beauty. How, you know come, how come you didn't I've, order that one for I've me, been, Sam? I've been looking a little scruffy these days. You know what? I, I think I could use a beauty enhancement more than anyone else. <laughs> a <And> beauty <laughs> enhancing suit? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then there's of course the juke one, the one, uh, the Korean porridge version of yeah. that. And I've never had Samgyetang porridge, so mm -hmm. that's going to be really interesting. I can't wait to try that one. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Still bubbling. So the coolest thing just happened with our meal. Like we were planning on ordering the ginseng wine, which is called Insamju, and she just brought it over surface. It's like read my mind. That is awesome. So we have some ginseng wine to complement yeah. the ginseng soup and ginseng porridge. Let's have a taste. So let's try that in Samju. Mm, doesn't have a strong smell. Does it taste like medicine or is oh, it wow. pleasant? Let me have another sip. Oh. It really tastes like nothing, nothing else I've ever had before. I'm trying to think of a comparable. It, it's a little bit fruity, a little mm -hmm. bit sweet. It doesn't have a strong um, alcohol taste, and it also doesn't have that strong of a, of a ginseng taste, to be honest. Mm. You can taste hints of it, but it's, it's kind of fascinating. He's fascinated. Interesting. So my samgyetang has arrived. Check it out. So since it's for one person, you obviously don't get the whole chicken. But if you were ordering a family size one, the chicken would actually be stuffed with rice and garlic. So I have a smaller portion. I still think there is some inside. Yeah. Yeah. 
And Maybe not sometimes as much, it comes though. with jujubes as well. Yeah. So. So yeah, it's like a very light broth. Looks like chicken soup when when you have a cold. Yeah. So. It's. I know that it's considered one of the healthier dishes that you can have in Korea. Mm. It has a lot of uh, mm. health benefit benefits associated with it. And look at this. There's like a tea bag, but I think it's probably filled with spices. Yeah. Ooh. That's that's pretty cool. That's gonna make the broth. Uh, Super really flavorful, nice. and it's a thicker broth. Is it? Yeah. Mm. That's nice. How do you like that? It has a lot of spices. I mean, lots of new spices for me Quick here. Quick question: is, is, this, is this your first time to try this? I had it once before, many years ago. So, and I was yeah, a it's fan been a long time, time for me too. Yeah, but this isn't bad. What do you think? It's nice. I like it. I think I got some of the chicken breast here, so I'm just gonna break it apart. The chicken still has the skin on it and bones. Plop that on the plate. Ooh, lots of bones. Oh my. Be careful. I know. This is going to be tricky with chopsticks. How am I going to manage? <laughs> the true test. Has Audrey mastered the use of chopsticks? Let's see. Let's pick up the bone. This is the wishbone. Oh, oh my wow. gosh. So, do you want to make a wish? Let's break that. First, you try some of the chicken and then we'll okay, do that. Let's, let's save that for later. Let's put it here. No, yeah. that's for my wine. Let's leave it here. Okay. <laughs> oh my. So, so much going on. There's so much excitement here. Okay. Yeah. It's a good meal. I like it. Chicken nice and tender? Mm hmm. Super tender. And you know what? The food came out so fast. I think they probably are just working on it before anyone shows up, you know, because it was here right yeah, away. Yeah, we're, we're not eating at a typical dinner time. So yeah. maybe they were getting it ready for, 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 for the dinner crowd. For the dinner crowd, yeah. Or maybe it was left over from lunch. <laughs> we're kind of in between the lunch and dinner time. So Sam here, ready to begin? Yeah, let's let's check out what the juke form looks like. Okay, so you can see that it's... It's a lot thicker than mine. Yeah, it's very thick, so I'm gonna give that a good stir. Yeah. And you can tell that the um, the chicken's already been... Deboned. Deboned. I kind of like that, it's less work for you. Yeah, less work. So let's try that. It looks really hot, it's piping hot. I'm gonna Don't blow on yourself. it. I also noticed yours had um, black sesame seeds on top. Mm. What was that? Oh wow, that is delicious. Yeah. Yeah, it's got like it's it's such a thick juke like uh, mm -hmm. juke like broth like the the porridgey broth, mm -hmm. and then I really taste a lot of the it tastes like the tastes like shredded chicken, and then I think I had something like a pine nut in there. Ooh. So that was really tasty. Nice. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Going in for another bite. Yeah. And it's just a really nice meal to be having in autumn when it's cool out. Good stuff, huh? I'm a big fan of this. Yeah? I, admit, yeah. I wasn't coming in with the highest expectations, but <laughs> this has won me over. Okay, so we are going to swap dishes. Sam's yep. going into my bowl. So I've been able to locate where the rice is in the middle of the chicken. La la. So that's going to be my first bite. Rice Hello. has been located. That's some, oh. that's some special rice. <laughs> it's got flavor to it. It's not plain, and it's extra sticky, extra mm -hmm. glutinous. Yeah, and it's just delicious. I'm I'm loving it so far. That's cool. And you know what else I noticed? Since this is more of a simple dish, they've also given us a sauce over here. I don't know if it's yep. spicy. Or I think what. that's a samjang sauce, and it looks like we, we also have kimchi and Ooh. we have peppers and. Want to try some of that? Yeah, I'm gonna try some of that with chicken. Okay. Okay, time to try some of the chicken. And I don't know if you're supposed to do this, but I am putting it into the samjang. That's how we're doing it. That's how we're rolling. I'm sure so. we could probably just plop some of it in the soup as well. So that's got red pepper paste and also soybean paste. So mm. should be a little, give it a little bit of spice. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it really tastes good yeah. with the samjang sauce. And that chicken is really tender. I know. So good. So good. Now I'm going to taste the porridge, the juke. So look at that. A lot thicker. Looks like there's some nuts and seeds in there. All right. You're going to like this. Just have a feeling. 
Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> isn't that oh good? Oh my. The pine nuts. That's where the magic is. Oh, isn't that good? What a nice addition. And you know what? I think I also had a raisin in there. Yeah, that might have been a raisin or it might have been the juju. Kind of like a date. Mmm. Is it tasty? That's really good. I think I may like yours better. <laughs> of course you do. Mm. I always order the best one. You do. Okay, time for the wishbone break session. Make a wish. One, two, three. Wait, I haven't made a wish. I forgot to make a wish. One. The wish. One, two, three. Uh. <laughs> Try again. One, one two. two. Oh, you got the long. <gasps> oh, I got the wish. So what, what's your wish? Well, I can't tell you. <laughs> Don't worry. It's good for both of us. I hope so. All right, so we are done at this point. That was a very filling meal and I have to say like I am sweating profusely from this <laughs> and I remember when I tried this in the summer like many years ago I was doing this I was sweating even more but this is it's definitely the kind of meal that makes you sweat afterwards It's just piping hot and just the types of ingredients they have Anyways, on to price point. So it was both of these dishes were thirteen thousand won. So in total, twenty six thousand iman yukchon won, which is about roughly twenty two, twenty one U.S. dollars. So it was good value. I mean, we're leaving full. It's not as cheap as some of the other Korean uh, soups or stews, but when you consider the ingredients involved, the ginseng, the chicken, and whatnot, you can see why it's a bit more expensive. But definitely something we highly recommend. And we came here not sure if we were gonna like it or not, and we're leaving big fans. I think we would come back again soon if we can. So it is dinner time in the hood. Hello from Hapjong. Yeah, we're starving and we mm -hmm. can't wait to have some Korean barbecue. This time, instead of pork or other types of meat, we're going in for some chicken. Chicken! So, spicy chicken awaits us. All right, let's go. Sam is always scouting the area for new restaurants. Anything interesting? Seriously, I am. Well, I found a place that does himotang, which I think is like a seafood stew. Ooh. And we also found uh, another uh, juke place that does Korean porridge. And we found a ton of barbecue places. So we've got like options galore here. Ooh la la. All right, Sammy boy. What's happening tonight? <sighs> What's happening is we're going to be having some spicy Korean barbecue chicken. Yes. And I can't wait for it to come. Mm -hmm. It's duck galbi and it's a little bit different than the duck galbi we normally have, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So how would you explain the one that we normally have? Okay, so normally it's like a stir fry. They cook it in a pot with potatoes and cabbage and a whole bunch of other ingredients. Yeah, like rice cakes and different vegetables. Yeah. But this one is just going to be pure like meat on the grill, chicken yeah. on the grill. And you cook it yourself. And it's got the gochujang sauce, the spicy red pepper sauce, so we can't wait for that to come to the table. So while Sam is chugging on the beer, I'm gonna have some iced tea. Keeping things classy over here. If I can open the bottle, oh my gosh, please for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, usually you, you get me to open bottles for you, so I this know. is, oh wow, look what's here. Fired. Here comes the fire, ah, come some of the... And there it is. Oh my. So That's now, scary. now it's just time for chicken, but before that comes, yeah, you can put your hands by it. It's really cold. Like today was the coldest day in Seoul, I think probably so of this far. fall. I think it was like a high of five or seven degrees. So mm. it's like winter is coming, but it's still, it, I mean, it's just the turn of November. So how does, how does so it taste? Lovely. Now that the fire's here, everything is good. Yeah, it's lovely. But how does the drink taste? <laughs> the drink is good. <laughs> it's iced tea, not sweet. Now we wait for the chicken to cook and just smell the lovely aromas. Um, okay, so basically I think we're having chicken thighs because he took the pair of scissors and cut off the, the drumstick. So those take a little bit longer to cook and then the rest of the meat will cook faster. And it just smells so good right now. I know, it smells so awesome. Good. Like I just love that gochujang sauce. It's yeah. gonna be so good and so spicy too. I know, and the last meal I had today was breakfast. It was a late breakfast, but I mean, <laughs> it's been a while. Like, it's dark out, so I'm ready for this. But we don't want to eat raw chicken, so we wait. All right, so until the chicken cooks, I'm gonna get started on the tofu. Yeah, the banchan here is Soft. really, it looks really good. Tofu, huge, 
spicy sauce. Huge piece of spicy tofu. Oh yeah. Good stuff. Mm. It's spicy too. Mm -hmm. Everything is spicy in this restaurant. I haven't had anything that didn't leave my mouth on fire, especially the chicken. At long last. At long last. <laughs> so it is ready to eat. Here is the piece of Korean spicy chicken. Mm -hmm. So before I eat it, I'm gonna take it for a bit of a swim in the samjang sauce. So you're, you're gonna make it even more spicy. Make it even spicy. more spicy. I love this sauce. This is like the best sauce. It's a mixture of the gochujang, which is a Korean spicy sauce, the Korean red pepper sauce, along with the soybean sauce. All right, Sam, you eat the lettuce with chopsticks. I don't know what. I, th I thought maybe it was cut a little bit bigger, but no, no it's you really it small. Chopsticks. So I should be having that with chopsticks. So I'll tell you what. Oh I'll man. put the meat in and then I'll grab some lettuce. There you go. Oh yeah. Wow. That is super oh spicy, man. really juicy, really tender. I'm now gonna put in a little bit of lettuce. <laughs> mm. All right. So I'm going to wrap mine in this perilla leaf and. There we go. Mm. So what do you think? Is your tongue on fire? It is, but like, this kind of has like a minty flavor. So it balances out the heat a little bit, so I do like it. That's good. Wait, can you really taste the gochujang sauce too? I didn't dip it in the extra sauce. <laughs> but the, What's the on it is enough. That's like my level of spicy. And You're done. Stop there. That's good for you. <laughs> So when the temperature drops in Korea, I find myself appreciating Korean barbecue even more because it's so cold outside, but when you come into the restaurant, you warm up, but then you get even warmer once you're by the grill. It's just like, it's almost like being by a campfire or, or a stove. Or <laughs> Your own little fireplace at the table. Yeah, it feels like my own little personal fireplace. And once I get cozy here, I don't even want to leave. Like I just feel like staying here. <laughs> I don't want to walk back to my apartment. Okay, so round two is cooking on the grill and it's kind of cool because every once in a while like a chunk of chicken fat will drop and the whole grill starts sizzling and like it catches on fire. It's yeah, like, the fire Whoa. will just come like right through the grill. It's pretty so awesome. So much action at the table. But yeah, this is quite a bit of chicken to be honest. I always so, leave feeling stuffed <coughs> by the end of it. It's one of the, like one of my favorite parts, I don't know if it's one of your favorite parts, but one of my favorite parts about any kind of Korean barbecue is the do-it-yourself at the table aspect. Yes. I think it's so fun to be cooking the meat mm -hmm. right in front of you and it just makes it a more immersive experience and it's something that, that really makes Korean barbecue unique. Yeah. So how was that meal for you? That was awesome. We're full and like my tongue is literally on fire. At this Same point. here. At one point Sam was asking me like, are you cold? Are you sniffling? And I was like, no, my tongue is on fire. <laughs> I feel like I'm like part dragon, part human right now. <laughs> but anyways, in terms of the price point, so the barbecue itself was 20,000 won, mm -hmm. iman won, and then the beer was an extra 4,000 won. So in total, it was iman sachon won, which is about 20 US dollars. And that's awesome value for a barbecue like that. We're leaving stuff. And at that particular place, the guy is really nice, very yeah. friendly, very attentive service. So if you're around the Hapjong station area, come check out this place. It's a really good barbecue. So it is time for yet another delicious meal here in Korea. Today we're having sundubu jjigae, which is a tofu stew. And this is probably my favorite Korean dish. It's so tasty and I can't wait for it to get here. So we're back here in Seoul, Korea. We were here for all of August when it was like incredibly hot and humid and now we're back in the middle of October and this is like mm. my favorite weather. I know it's, it's nice so and nice. cool. And we're staying in a totally different area. The last time we were staying near Seoul Station yeah. and now we're near Hapjong Station which is actually near Hongdae, a very yeah. popular area and also near the Han River which is yeah. a really cool place. So we've been exploring lots of new restaurants here in the yeah. new hood. And you know what? I think we found our favorite place already right here. Here. 
so you know what is the worst when you have your camera set to slow motion and you've been recording this fantastic meal and then you realize <laughs> crap there's no audio and we're eating at like slow speed so we're gonna have to do you this know what? again I, I'm, I'm not the most articulate person and I, I thought i did a really good job of explaining this dish and it's all gone anyways the food is here we're having our sundubu jige so if you take a look here it comes in this earthenware pot and when it first came out it was still bubbling so it was fresh off the stove so it was like piping hot it was still boiling but anyways here's the dish so look at all those massive see, chunks of tofu yeah this is all the the fresh tofu the soft tofu yeah. and they are so generous here like they give you so so much yeah. Um, the nice thing about the soft tofu as well is that it, it has less water content, so that silken tofu is just... No, it has more water content. That's why it's so, <laughs> yes, so jiggly. Yeah, the less water, the harder it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yes, but right. some of the other ingredients, we also have some, some chives here. They have some zucchini. We have this massive dumpling. Usually when we order sundubu jjigae, it comes with clams, and I'm not a huge fan of clams, so I really like that this restaurant gives you this giant mandu instead, which is so cool. Look, no, look, at that. look how big that is. It's a king-sized mandu. Wong mandu over there. Yeah. So what else is in here? Let's see. Oh, we also have a cracked egg. It's kind of like a poached egg. They just drop yes. it in. So it's still and, a little bit raw, you break it up and, and just the, mix it around. The base is made out of gochujang sauce, which is the red pepper paste sauce. Yeah. And that's what gives it its spiciness and a lot of its kick. Yes, and we always eat this with rice, always. So All you right, take try a little a bite. bit of rice on your spoon, a little bit of soup. <laughs> take three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. That is so, so good. It's my favorite dish. I love Sundi Buja game. Whenever I have a chance to eat this, I go for it. So Sam is going in for the tofu, going in for the sundubu. Mm. Yeah, that is just delicious. Your eyes are watering a little bit. What's going on the over whole, there? The last bite I had, <laughs> like the spice went down the wrong... <laughs> the chili flakes? Yeah, the, 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 the windpipe or the wrong, <laughs> wrong way. So I have like chili flakes stuck in my throat. Oh my, this is a dangerous dish. Yeah. But anyways, in terms of jjigae, like there's a whole bunch of other jjigae, like the Dangjeon mm -hmm. jjigae, kimchi jjigae. This is also my favorite, the sundubu jjigae. Yeah. And so this is something that we typically have, like, not on a daily basis, but several times throughout the week. Yeah. So anyways, on to the starter of this meal. Yeah. Which let's, is, let's open that up and see what's in which there. Which is a giant mandu. So I'm just going to plop it down on here dissect it with the chopsticks. Ooh, like dissection. That. This is like science class except in the kitchen. Yep and as you can see in here it's got a lot Ooh. of different meat. It's got um, it's, it's got like ground different beef. vegetables. You can I can see chives in there. Yeah it's kind Ooh. of like ground beef so I'm gonna try a bite. Yeah I love mandu so it's such a cool addition to this sundubu jjigae and I have to say this is not like a regular thing that you would put in here mm -hmm. this is quite a special addition that is uh, unique for this restaurant yeah we really lucked out finding this place because this is what they specialize in yeah basically. they're a mandu restaurant and we'll probably be back again to do a mandu video at some oh point. and you know what they're so good that they've actually been on television a few times yeah yeah so like you can see throughout, throughout the restaurant you see these like this kind of like newsreel type yeah of, um, yeah, it's really cool. So we're really enjoying the meal. All right, so I'm pouring myself some more of the, the makeu, the beer. Some kas. Kas. And yeah, this is one of the big four Korean beers that they have. There's kas, mm -hmm. ov, height, and capri. So Which one's the best? Well, this is the only one they have here, I think. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> this will have to be I, the best for I probably have. I probably actually have ov and height more, but this is still pretty good refreshing all right so let's take a tour of the banchan yeah so we have a whole bunch of different things we have vegetables over here we have some different types of seafood and then of course we have kimchi and what makes us one of our favorite restaurants so far is the quality of the banchan you can tell that it's homemade mm -hmm. you can tell that it's really fresh and just uh, the quality is exceptional so you get all of these nice side dishes to eat along with your sundubu jjigae Feeling satisfied, Sammy boy. Oh yeah. Polish that off. That feast of feasts is over. And now it's time for price point. So basically the two Sundubu Jigues came to 6,000 won each. Mm -hmm. And the beer is 3,000 won. So in total that was 15,000 won. 
Manual Tone 1, which roughly right now is about 12 US dollars. So that was a very affordable meal. We're leaving full, we're leaving satisfied, and because this is one of our favorite restaurants, you know we'll be back again soon. Well, good evening, good evening. It's starting to get dark a lot earlier here in Seoul. It's only 7 p.m., but it's like pitch black out. Yeah. Anyways, we're going for dinner. We're going to have a really healthy bibimbap. Yeah, this is kind of like a contemporary vegetarian take on traditional bibimbap. And we just discovered this restaurant a few days ago and it has become our new favorite restaurant now that we're staying back around Seoul Station again, so. Yes, this is actually our third night in the row. <laughs> Yeah, we, we're on a bit of a health kick, so we'll show you why. Alright, so we've already made a video about regular bibimbap. Tonight, we're getting fancy. Yeah, tonight we're getting fancy and we ordered two different kinds. One is sundubu bibimbap and that comes with a soft silken tofu. Yeah. And the other one we ordered is bosat bibimbap, which is a mushroom-based bibimbap. Mm -hmm. Both are vegetarian. Both have ingredients that are quite different from normal bibimbap. Yeah. And when the dishes arrive, we'll give you a full tour and show you all the different ingredients. So the food has arrived and I get so excited about this meal because it's so healthy and so tasty so it's like really fun to eat it. <laughs> so anyways, take a look at the bowl. It's just like fresh raw ingredients. I have broccoli, I have red and yellow peppers, I have persimmon, banana, pumpkin, grapes, different types of lettuce and cabbage and then mushrooms. And I think this on top is ground sesame seeds. That's what I read online, but not entirely sure. And yeah, it's just so healthy. And look, this is kind of like a two-step meal. So you have to grab your dressing. Yeah. So first, you dress your so salad. Unlike other bibimbaps where you have the uh, it all prepared for you mm -hmm. and you just mix it yourself, this you actually have to put in your rice. Yeah, so, so it's a, a soy-based sauce and you kind of dress your salad. Mm -hmm. So you do that first. All right, that's step one. What's step, step two? One. Oh, step you, two. You've already uncovered your rice. I have. And this rice is different from normal plain rice. You call mm -hmm. this, this is kind of like a purple bean Purple rice, rice. look so at that. It's really pretty. Really healthier than normal rice. So. Okay, so first we have to mix this all together. You mix your vegetables, mix your salad. Yeah, and that helps you get the sauce uh, evenly Spread distributed. it around. Banana, did I mention Looking we have a banana here? There's fruit in here too. There's yeah. banana and grapes. There's so also then, persimmon too. Once you have mixed your salad, you add the rice. There we go. And you take some of the, the spicy red pepper paste. Yeah, the gochujang. Just there. That's it? We like our spice. That's plenty. Are you kidding me? I would put on probably <laughs> about double that amount, but okay. And then you mix all of mix that it. around. Yeah. That's the second step. Yeah, this is this is like fascinating bibimbap because this is a dish I've had in so many different restaurants, but I've never seen such like a contemporary twist on it. Yeah. And it's, it has ingredients that you would never normally see. Yeah, like fruit. I've yeah. never encountered fruit, fruit in bibimbap walnuts before. Walnuts and things. So I'm gonna go for some of the mushroom here. Mm. This is my first time ordering the, the mushroom one. Today I purposely tried to make it vegetarian, but I normally get chamchi, which is tuna. Oh, it's falling out, it's falling out. Mm. How is it? Those are good mushrooms, wow. Yes, it's your first time to try the mushroom mm. one, that's right. You've had, uh, you've had tuna or other types. Broccoli here. So, so, healthy. so good. Such healthy Korean food. Mm. Excellent. Okay, so before you dig into yours, want to show us what else we got with this? Sure. So before I mix my bibimbap, I'll show you the soup here. So we have myokguk, which mm. is the Korean seaweed soup. Yeah. It's really healthy. I'll try a little bit here. Mm. It's 
nice having a warm soup on a cold yeah. night like this. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we also get. Yeah, we get kimchi. The kimchi. And we get eggs. Always. And hard boiled eggs with yeah. a little bit of salt and pepper that you can All right. into. Alright, so enough talking about that. Let's start mixing mine up. So I think the only difference in ours is that. Mine comes with tofu. Yeah, and mine is mushroom. Yeah, so I'm just gonna really give that a good yeah. mix. I'm gonna slice up that banana. And you know what? I never would have thought banana would taste good in a bibimbap. It does. It's delicious. It it's like, does. It almost makes it, gives it some yeah. sweetness. So while you mix, I should also mention, you don't have to make it vegetarian. Like if you want, you can also add chicken breast, octopus, yeah. They have tuna, they have pork, so lots of different ingredients. Keep it time for my goji junk sauce. Oh, and I'm gonna put a lot on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Sam's going a little overboard. A little but overboard, but. <laughs> you're the one eating it. I would, I would <laughs> rather have it too spicy than not spicy enough. So, I'm gonna give that a really good mix. Oh, it has pumpkin, pumpkin as well, too. Whole yes. pot. So and the colors, the colors are just so vibrant in yeah. this dish. Yeah, that's awesome. Ready to dig in? Ready to dig in. So I'm gonna make sure I get a bit of tofu here and I'm gonna try some pumpkin. Oops. And yeah, rice. Mm. Wow. That's nice and spicy. I just like, this really is one of my favorite Korean meals and I love bibimbap, but now that I've found uh, an alternative type of bibimbap, it's just, it's really opened up like a whole new. Uh, taste bud experience, <laughs> yeah, whole new world of food here. So this is fantastic. All right, how was that dinner for you? Oh, that was amazing. So healthy, so filling. But like normally, I, I find when you're sometimes when you know when you're sacrificing eating really healthy food, there's a sacrifice with taste. But not that. That is so delicious. I, I swear, I could probably eat that every night for a month, and I wouldn't get sick of it. <laughs> That's how much I like it. And it's also affordable too. Yeah. So it's only 6,000 won each, so 12,000 in total, yeah. man each on one, and highly recommend going.